Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here, your source for gaming, tech, emulation, and open source news. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, we're talking about Wii U emulation with Seamu, and Seamu just got a massive update. It's now up to version 2.1. So in addition to including all 93 experimental releases since Seamu 2.0, Seamu version 2.1 is changing things moving forward. There's no longer going to be an experimental version of Seamu and a stable version. It's all going to be one. So if you do update to Seamu version 2.1 and still want to receive the latest and greatest changes, some that can maybe introduce some new features but break things in the process, there is an option for you here. You'll have to check Receive Untested Updates. And once you do that, you'll get the cutting edge changes again. If you update to version 2.1 and only want stable updates and stuff that's been tested and bugs that have been worked out, you don't have to do anything, you don't have to check anything. Seamu will update when it's ready. So since the last major release of Seamu, which was version 2.0, here are the big changes. They've added app image and Flatpak releases for Linux. They've added an experimental release for Mac OS. It's only available on x86 and 64, but it can be run on our Macs through Rosetta 2 emulation. Molten VK is used as the graphics backend. They've added a tool to emulate the USB portals for Skylanders and Disney Infinity. They've added NFC support, so Pokemon Rumble U figures can now be scanned from a file similar to the existing Amiibo scanning. They've added support for Wii U Homebrew and NUS format titles. They've added support for connecting to Pretendo, which is the free and open source replacement for Wii U and 3DS servers. And they've added a portable mode by placing a directory named Portable next to the CMU executable. And on top of that, they've included a whole bunch of fixes, performance improvements, optimizations, compatibility improvements, new features, and even more. This is a massive update. For example, on Linux, they've added in Wayland support. They've fixed online connectivity for accounts in North America region after Wii U System Update 5.5.6. They've added a pairing utility for Wiimotes. They've added Wiimote support for Linux and Mac OS. Now, if you follow along with more of the experimental versions of CMU, you probably already know these updates, or if you just watch my YouTube videos. But if you stick with the major releases, you may want to check out version 2.1. They are not messing around here. The development team accomplished a whole lot, and major props to everything they've done. But moving on, and next up, we're talking about ROM hacking. And if you're a fan of Streets of Rage on the Genesis, you may be a fan of this ROM hack here. Billy Time Game says Streets of Rage Plus is a combination of all of my previous hacks along with multiple new features. High score SRAM, more alternate colors, access to the bad ending in one player, six button controls, and a difficulty randomizer. If you are curious about this one and wanted to see it in action, Billy Time has a video over on his YouTube channel and I'll drop a link to it in the description below. Everything I talk about link will be in the description below. And it's also hosted over on ROM Hack Plaza. Next up here, if you're a fan of the Amiga, there's going to be a new game here getting a digital release, and it is called Rogue Craft. All of the information about this game is up on itch.io. It's releasing September 2nd digitally, and there's also a physical version. On top of that, they do recommend using WinUAE as the emulator of choice. Next up, we're talking about LEGO Horizon Adventures, and it seems that PlayStation may have accidentally leaked the release date to this game. It was spotted on their main page that the game is launching on November 14th. It has since been taken down. I mean, if we head to the PlayStation Store page for LEGO Horizon Adventures, it now says announced and releases on 2024. Let me know your thoughts about this game in the comments below, and let me know your thoughts about PlayStation leaking dates in the comments below. If I'm not mistaken, they leaked a couple of other things in the past recently. And speaking about PlayStation, next up we're talking about PlayStation. And this is not great news if you're in the market for a new PlayStation, especially if you're in the market in Japan. The PS5 is reported to get another steep price increase by going up around $90. So the price increase in Japan is going up on September 2nd, and there's been no word as to whether or not there's going to be a price increase for the rest of the world. I would assume that since they're increasing it in one area, there's a chance they're going to increase it in others. I find this very weird. I mean, in this day and age, everything seems to be getting more expensive. But at the same time here, hardware generally gets cheaper as time goes on. So let me know your thoughts about this one in the comments below. Do you think the price of the PS5 is going to increase or possibly decrease as we go into holiday season and have Black Friday and all of that stuff? 
I am very curious about this one. I mean, you'd think that hardware prices would go down in time, not up. Next up, we're talking about Valve's Deadlock, and this game continues to be very interesting. I mean, first when it came out, it was all hush-hush, and there was a very restricted playtest. And then Valve opened it up a little bit, and then anyone having the playtest could invite any of their friends to also join the playtest. And what has resulted here is one of the most popular games on Steam. In the last 24 hours, Deadlock is sitting in 15th place. I mean, if we take a look here, it's right on the heels of Stardew Valley and Baldur's Gate 3, and it's more popular than Call of Duty, Path of Exile, Elden Ring, Team Fortress 2, Monster Hunter World, and even more. Now, to be honest with you, I am very curious about this one. I mean, it was a game that was supposed to be relatively locked down and just in testing. But that doesn't seem to be the case here, and I'm wondering if this is a whole huge marketing strategy by Valve, and one that's very effective. I do want to point out something, though. We talked about this game yesterday and how cheating was rampant. So Nicholas White 2192 commented on my video yesterday and says, If you cheated and got banned in Deadlock, you and everyone else you invited will also get banned. For example, if you invited 300 plus people and then you cheated, caught and banned, you just ruined the day of 300 plus people because they also got banned. This already happened during the last week of July. Some Chinese player cheater got banned along with hordes of players he invited. They flooded the forums and tried to appeal the ban. So some food for thought here to consider who you're inviting to play Deadlock. If one of your friends you know is a cheater, you may not want to invite them because they may get you banned. Next up here, we're talking about the Smurfs, and I don't think this is a game I would normally talk about, but taking a look here, and wow, this game looks a lot like Mario in a game that I think I may enjoy. So this one is called Smurfs Dreams, and it releases on October 24th. It's headed to PC, PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo Switch, basically all of the consoles. And let me know your thoughts about this one in the comments below. Are you oddly entertained by this footage? Next up, we're talking about smartphone manufacturers Xiaomi, and it's being reported that they're working on a brand new in-house system on a chip for next year. It's also being reported that this chip is possibly going to be in mid-range phones and not high-end ones, as performance is expected expected to be a generation behind. In my opinion, this is good and bad news. It's good that we're possibly getting another chip here and competition is always good, but it might be bad news for people picking up these mid-range smartphones with a chip that may not perform. And I'm very curious about how it's going to stack up in terms of compatibility for stuff like gaming and emulation. And speaking about emulation, next up we're talking about GameCube and Wii emulation on Linux with Dolphin. Now, Dolphin currently has flat packs over on Flathub, but they are unverified. It's not run by the official Dolphin team. And that seems to be changing here in the very near future. The Dolphin team is planning on making their Flathub account official. Now, in terms of something like overall performance or bug fixes or anything, this is not going to change any of that. It's just going to make the Flathub official. So in terms of security, in terms of authenticity, it'll be the real flat pack coming right from the Dolphin team. Although right now I will say whoever is maintaining this repository is doing a great job of it because everything seems to be okay. Next up we're talking about Epic Mickey Rebrushed and if you're a fan of this game you might be excited to know we may be getting a demo soon. Keyword is May. But THQ Nordic Tees didn't get a chance to play Disney Epic Mickey Rebrushed at Gamescom. Stay tuned. So a lot of people are speculating that this means we're getting a demo. And speaking about teasers, next up we're talking about Worms Armageddon Anniversary Edition. And if you've never played this game before, I'd be kind of surprised. I mean, it's been out for a long time. There's been a whole bunch of iterations of it. And now Worms Armageddon Anniversary Edition has been rated for PS5, Xbox, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Switch in Taiwan which means we may be getting a global release of this on a whole bunch of different platforms. Next up, we're talking about GOG, and I've got some good news and some bad news. So first up is some good news here. Resident Evil 2 is now out on GOG. Also good news, GOG is having their back-to-school sale right now with deals up to 95% off. So there are some huge discounts on some huge games out there, and since this is GOG, they are DRM-free, which is one of the big benefits of GOG. And now for the bad news, and this is Right from GOG's Twitter account, or X account, due to the publisher's request, the suffering and the suffering ties that bind will soon be delisted from GOG. 
While this is disappointing news, we remain dedicated to our mission. Challenges like this remind us that we can't win every battle, but our commitment to protecting classic games and preserving gaming history endures. Now, both of these games are still on sale until the beginning of September, and while I can't say they are amazing blockbuster games, at the same time, you can make that decision for yourself. There's a whole bunch of YouTube videos showcasing gameplay and they're really not priced that high. Let me know your thoughts about this one in the comments below. And speaking about game preservation, next up we're talking about something that popped up over on itch.io that surprised me, and that's Street Fighter 2 PC, SFIBM. So this person says SFIBM is the first editable fighting game on PC that spawned a lot of Street Fighter hacks and other crossovers in the 90s. They found the source code for the game, which dates back to 1991. And now this has been ported and archived here on itch.io. If you are curious about this one and wanted to learn more about it, like everything I talk about, link will be in the description below. Moving on, and we're talking about Final Fantasy XIV, and it appears that Final Fantasy XIV is still being targeted by DDoS attacks. So if you were having issues connecting to servers over the weekend, well, here is your explanation as to why. Now, this isn't the first set of DDoS attacks for Final Fantasy XIV, and I'm wondering why this game keeps getting attacked. I've got a hunch that this is not going to be the end of DDoS attacks for Final Fantasy XIV, but let me know your thoughts about this one in the comments below. Were you impacted? Next up is just a heads up about a potential collaboration in the future that may or may not happen but it appears that Concerned Ape, who is behind Stardew Valley, wants Pam to be in Fortnite. Now, to be honest with you, this would be a very weird crossover, although Fortnite has a whole bunch of weird crossovers, so maybe this would be right in line with what Fortnite does. Stardew Valley is still super popular. I mean, it still sits on top lists for Steam players. And I think this may be something that Fortnite may want to check out. And speaking about stuff that may or may not happen and airing towards the side of will never happen. And next up, we're talking about Grand Theft Auto 3 Tokyo, which apparently was being considered by Rockstar. Now, I think I just said Grand Theft Auto 3. I just meant to say Grand Theft Auto. Anyways, here, trademarks were filed for GTA Tokyo, GTA Bogota, and GTA Sin City and none of those ever happened. There's a very interesting article over on Time Extension, which I'll drop a link to in the description below. So based on the article, it appears the whole reason why GTA Tokyo never happened is it appeared to be a logistical headache for Rockstar. I mean, mapping out Tokyo, implementing satire, and everything seemed like a whole lot of work. Let me know your thoughts about this one in the comments below. Do you think GTA Tokyo would have been fun to play? And speaking about fun to play, next up we're talking about Super Mario Eclipse, which has just dropped on Game Banana. This is a massive overhaul or a massive mod to Super Mario Sunshine. So with this patch or mod or ROM hack or subscribe to Mr. Sujano or overhaul or whatever you want to call it because it's absolutely huge. There are 120 brand new shrines, three playable characters, new movement mechanics, an improved game engine, new and remixed boss fights, an original soundtrack, a new story with hand animated cutscenes and massive reward for 100% completion. It is up on Game Banana. It works with Dolphin Emulator. And let me know your thoughts about this one in the comments below. Are you interested in playing Super Mario Eclipse? And if you've played it, how did you enjoy it? Next up, we're talking about Fragpunk, which just got a brand new gameplay trailer and an announcement that a closed beta is heading in early October. This game seems to be super popular. A lot of people seem to be very interested in it. So they say in the description, this is not your standard 5v5 tactical hero shooter, so don't expect any two rounds to be the same. And this is just a heads up if you're interested in the closed beta. Apparently you can apply now for it via Steam or Xbox. And speaking about stuff in development, next up we're talking about Scum, which just released its development blog for August. If you're interested in this game, if you play this game, it just got a very big update. So apparently the quad is back, bunkers have been overhauled, there's now two new enemies in the bunker, one has a flamethrower, and there's some new puzzle tactics and even more. This game is currently 60% off on Steam, and I don't think it's compatible with the Steam Deck. And last up here, we're talking about Fatal Run 2089, and Atari has announced that this game has been revived. There's a brand new version of this game headed for release. This game is based on Fatal Run for the Atari 2600. It's built in Unreal Engine 5, and it's headed to the Switch, Xbox, PlayStation, PC via Steam, and Epic Game Store, and I guess wherever else you can play video games. They're trying to launch this thing everywhere. 
I don't have a release date for you yet, but let me know your thoughts about this one in the comments below. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and the one fluff. We talked about a bunch today. Let me know your thoughts about absolutely anything in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate. Save your state.